So my name is Cindy Thurman, and this is and we are going to be presenting Gold Ledger tonight and talking about basically accounting. So I hope you guys are ready. You ready? So and you want to start with single ledger accounting? Let's do that. So way, way, way back in the day, during Mesopotamia time, they had something called single single ledger accounting. This is when it started. And they would add an entry for every time that an asset was sold or bought. Then we move on to Venetian time, where the merchants started creating double ledger accounting. And they started adding to their book debits and credits, as you can see with the assets and the expenditures. Um, but they had they had a little bit more loss because you had double books, but it was more accurate. And so this actually pushed Venetian time ahead of its time. This is what created Venetian merchants ahead of other merchants in the time. Now move forward a few centuries and we're here today. And very, very recently, a couple of decades ago, we, see, some people can argue a couple of decades ago, some people can argue a decade ago. Either way, we started introducing triple ledger accounting. And what this basically means is that besides debits and credits, we also added signed receipts. You guys want to dive into that? Are you ready to dive into that? Let's do this. Okay. What we utilize is a, an application called Ledger CLI. And what it allows us to do is it creates double ledger accounting for us. And it also allows us to be flexible in our double accounting. So it creates stuff like commodities. In our case, we created gold as a commodity. We defined it. We defined the prices. We registered it. And then we defined accounts, defined, excuse me, defined accounts to go with these gold commodities. In this case, you can see the accounts are Jimmy and Senor, Senor Creativo. Disculpame. Mi español es no bien. And as you can see, under this transfer transaction, you have assets and expenditures and assets and income, which is basically the debits and credits under the normal double ledger accounting pump sets of assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses, as you can see over there. But ledger CLI allows you to do way more than that. So we're going to move up, and we're going to see what we can do. In walks gold ledger. So first you have a sender, and a sender creates a transaction and signs the transaction. The recipient then takes the transaction and signs the receipt and says the transaction is done. At this point, an observer can then audit the transaction on the gold ledger. This is what makes the gold ledger the gold ledger. In order to do these signings, we use PGP. The transactions are hashed. And basically, it's something that everyone can observe from a public perspective. Okay. Gold ledger format. So the gold ledger format creates the account name, as you can see over here it has its normal debits and credits, and it, it does go by the, the standard accounting procedures. Additionally, what gold requires from the letter CLI is timestamps. But you can also customize it to make more unique things, more unique transactions based on your needs, as well as contracts that you would write yourself. of 
file, file format in where the debitor is the folder, the top level, and it creates with the timestamp each individual transaction. And they are saved by the timestamp for the order, as well as security and permissions, uniqueness, autonomy. These are all very important to keep the gold ledger the gold ledger. As you can see in the transfer, there is two accounts in this transfer. The timestamp is extremely important. And you can have all of your assets for the debit and credit. And it is stored in this aspect. Okay. So, like we said before, all of the transactions are signed. They are signed by CGP key. Each individual account is recognized by a CGP key. So their public key is known to everyone, and that is part of the individual account's identity. Each individual account has their own normal, official accounting concepts of assets, liabilities, income, and expense, expenses. Group accounts. Group accounts can be controlled by one or more CGP keys. They can be customizable. You can have rules written into how many people would vote to create any kind of transaction. Or you can just have one per transaction or all of them per transaction. It's up to the group to, to basically define those rules. So here you see how the group is registering, which is also the transaction. And in this case, it was registering with two gold, and it creates, it debited the transactions, and it, it, it credited the expenses and the liability. Here's the concept for the equity involved, seeing that it's basically a group that was paid for work that was done. As you can see, the assets were credited and the income was debited, as well as the liability, and the equity was credited as well. That is for work well done. Sure. That is determined by the group itself. Within the group? So the standard is the equity account to account for voting rates. Okay. Uh, but you can define the input voting rate. So you can, you can basically redefine and customize this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here are a few official templates. We have a, one of them would be a transfer transaction, which basically is a normal transfer from, from one individual to another. In this case, as you see, that because the assets were debited and the expenses were credited for ICC and CZ gains 0.1 gold asset, negative 0.1 gold income. This is a basic transaction from ICC to CZ between two individuals. There's also a grant transaction, as we saw before, with Alvo's company, um, and that's for work that was done. But also anybody who, individual or group, who, who wants to participate on the network needs to register, and this is register their user or group. And in this case, you see this is a register for an individual. In this case, it's ICC. Um, and this is how you just create, in this case, we're just creating an individual on the gold ledger. Okay. So we have a little bit more advanced tools. One of the things that we can do is an automated transaction. So in this case, uh, the example is a sales tax. So let's just say somebody bought something and did a manual transaction for buying a product. You can have it automated that every time 
this product is sold that uh, a sales tax would be automated. Another one is budgets. You can enforce budgets in, within groups or within individuals of how much a person can spend on any given um, in any given sub, uh, in any given group. Um, and also, Python scripts can be embedded into the ledger and create hooks, as you can see here, with a Python definition for revenue sharing. Thank you.